Karen is the third and the most promising play that I wrote. I enjoy this story so much because it connects me to a period piece, which I love even if it's period dated. It's the Harlem Renaissance, 1943, New York City. It's the fabric of four lives interwoven because they all share the same struggles and the triumphs, joys, and pains and fears. This show is unique because it tells the story of a young man who's trying to find himself in a world that he doesn't belong in. And when he finds himself, it might be a little too late. Relax and enjoy the great curtain for himself and Benjamin Peace. The sounds of the street on the New York Cat. Ooh, wee! The horns sound like trumpets, and the engines racing sound like the rolling of a drum. It's Friday night, and I'm broke again. But it costs nothing to watch this picture show. A woman and her daughter hustling to catch the bus. A man and a woman do the hustle in the fourth floor window. A hustler hustling just to be hustling. New York is all about the hustle. If you ain't got no hustle, then you hustle. The sights of New York on Broadway and 42nd Street, where the lights are always shining, and even the nights look like days. People buying things, people selling things, people stealing things. Did I tell you about the time the blind man tried to pick my pocket? Oh, he wasn't blind. He just used the as a gimmick to make me think it could possibly be him. He stuck his hand in my pocket and tried to ease my wallet out without seeing. <laughs> Only a gimmick. Everybody here has one. Mmm, the smell of New York water from the bakery. Fresh baked cookies, apple pie, and bread. Make me so hungry, I just want to snatch one and run. But everyone knows that Edward Johnson don't play. It ain't easy to say Johnson's only daughter. Daddy walked out like three years ago. And every time she gets mad at me, it feels like the day he left. Ooh, the taste of New York. The green and crowd, and everything here is too expensive. How do these people wearing those designer clothes and riding in them expensive cars, eating at them fancy restaurants? Hey, whew. They look like they got extra. They ought to be giving me a little extra. Ooh, the little taste of this city can really humble an Alabama boy. Ooh, the feel of a New York stage under my feet with a packed house and the crowd calling, Bravo! Bravo! Encore! Encore! <laughs> Well, not yet. <laughs> the feel of a New York audition. After audition, lines of women who look just like me. Brown like me, tall like me, almost can sing as well as me. <laughs> but I got an edge. I can sing and I can dance, and I get almost every line right. <laughs> the grip of New York. Hard as pavement in front of my building. The grip is so strong, it just it keeps holding on to you like a black eye. It holds on to you like a good drug, or or a bad relationship with benefits and great love making. A grip so strong, it holds on to your face like a black eye from a lover you can't escape. <laughs> the conflicts of New York, in my neighborhood, in my building, and in my mind. Everything seems to stop and go like traffic. Well, everything's in a race for space and time to belong, to have, to hold and possess. Nothing or no one cares about the other. It's just survival. All about survival. Who will win? Who will lose? I come from nothing, and nothing's all I have to give. Hurry up. Ugh. Hey. 
Hey, uh, turn off that light, I say. And, and turn off that radio. Turn off the radio! Had a little too much to drink. I had way too much to drink. <laughs> oh, good, good morning, Miss Corella. Good morning, Perry. Uh, uh, you forgot to come collect your rent again. Uh, I, I was figuring I would give you a little more time. <laughs> No, uh, you forgot again. That only means Mr. Murphy must be on vacation. Not vacationing. He tended to his mother, who is ill. I ain't heard from him in about four months now. Now, you haven't drank up the rent money you've been collecting, have you? No, 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 ma'am. Now, Mr. Murphy has been good to me. Now, uh, there's no money that can replace his generosity. <laughs> Nineteen years ago, uh, about this day, I came in off that bus over there and, and stumbled into his den, hungry. He, he knew I went from a ride here because I ain't had one of them uh, gunks on my head. <laughs> I had a bowl cut just as country as I wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, he saw something in me. Yes, <laughs> He saw something in me that I didn't even see it myself. Well, I gotta go to work now. He saw something in me. <laughs> he always kind to Mr. Perry. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he told me the, the meat shall inhabit the earth. That's what he told me. He never looked down on me. Stop looking at me. Stop looking at me. Stop. Trying to live like the folks on the Upper East Side. 
They call themselves the, the Strivers, but they move like the shuffles and jives, if you ask me. Well, how much of one of those apartments go for one of the Strivers, bro? You don't even need to look in that direction, because uh, you ain't got enough money. They don't take too kindly of our kind over there in their neighborhoods unless we in maids uniforms or driving one of their cars. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, our kind? What, what is that? The only kind I know of is mankind. Uh, this may not be the side, but even here we are separated by uh, class and gender. Oh, <laughs> I didn't tell you. I'm an actress, Sally Hemsley. Mm -hmm. I act, dance, sing, do it all, and I'm going to be a star if it kills me. <laughs> this apartment will be temporary, but one day I am going to live on that Strivers Road, and I'm not going to be striving. I am going to be striving. <laughs> you can stay over here on this side of the tracks if you want to, but I got big dreams and plans to make a good life for myself. But do you got tap? You can tell Mr. Murphy to expect my call. All right. Oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> I arrived while she was struggling trying to get a box up the stairs. Yeah. And the bottom of the box fell out. Guess what? What? All her intimates were all over the side of her. <laughs> <laughs> so did she let you help? Well, she tried to resist my gentleman the charm. But she looked into my eyes. Uh-huh. Ooh, and I knew I had. I knew so I had. So she I let you help her? Of course. What was she supposed to do? Who could resist a country city boy? Uh, so she let you help her with her thing to the third floor. Yep, yep. <laughs> and she told me to come out for dinner. Ooh, I bet you she gave you a glass of water, too. Ooh, water so sweet from a glass, you think she washed her dishes in sugar? Ooh. <laughs> ah, yeah, I bet you were tired after calling all her stuff up three flights of stairs. Oh, I was mighty tired. <laughs> Oh, this place is called. Alonzo, she lives on the second floor. Second floor? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Second floor. And her pipes are spitting rusty water. She didn't give you the time of day, did she? You, you don't even know her name, do you? Nope, I didn't know. <laughs> but I don't get to. It's just a matter of time. If it wasn't for Miss Coretta watching her like she was a uh, daughter or something. Miss Coretta was that. Yeah, Miss Coretta had her nose all in the middle of our business, just like that, like, eh, eh. <laughs> I was in the shoe, though. Know? But you got the boot. So pay up. Pay up. Uh, uh, yeah, pay me the money you owe. I don't owe you any money, Perry. Now, wait a minute. I bet you that feisty girl wouldn't give you the time of day, and she did. That was no bet. Dems were just words. And besides, we didn't shake on it. So it was just words when uh, Big Harvey told Earl Martin he was going to kill him. Mm. And now he's dead. Now, I ain't seen no shake except I saw his body uh, shaking with the blood running down the sidewalk. <laughs> now, you go tell Earl Martin's family that their son ain't dead because Big Harvey and Earl Martin didn't shake on him. So you telling me you killed me over a dollar? No, but Big Harvey will. <coughs> and, I, and he owes me a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he don't owe you nothing. Just talk. Lots of talk. Get over here, please. <coughs> yeah, but good talk. Go a long way on this block, boy. <laughs> You'd be better served if you beg for a dollar than waiting for one for me. I'm tired. I'm gonna retire from this block in here. Leave this baby behind. <laughs> I'm gonna make something of myself like a real man's supposed to. You know, I was just thinking that I don't wanna die. I wanna be known for bed and and drink. Ding ding ding. <laughs> I saw Miss uh Miss Bernice looking at me today. And I could I could read her eyes piercing from behind that curtain. What were they saying? When were you going to do something with your life <coughs> instead of doing the same things day in and day out, begging and drinking? And passing out. Oh, push it. Like you don't be passed out on the street. Everybody knows it's your routine. It's just the way of life for you. <gasps> Turn out the light! Turn out the light! <laughs> Sally? Yeah. 
Miss Feisty. Oh, 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 I'll be back in five minutes. Oh, sit down. Hey, 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 make it a big one, because I got a lot to say. <laughs> Thank you for watching this clip. I hope that you enjoyed, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. You can contact me at 413-739-1500, or you can email me at bsmith at dreamstudios.org. Thank you for watching. Please enjoy and bring the red curtain to a stage near you.